All right, uh, this is essentially part two of our lecture for this week. I uh, apologize for the abrupt end there, but um, I've been try I was trying to record the lecture on a MacBook Air, and for some reason the QuickTime process just kept crashing. Um, so this is the, uh, you'll see that I've obviously switched operating systems. I'm back to a Windows machine, um, but we're in the iLab, so that doesn't really matter what I'm running on. So um, we're looking at the uh, the VM, getting into the iLab. Uh, we just got done talking about the different statuses and what you should see here is um, uh, I just shut it down so we need to get to back to a running status. Okay, Partially running isn't running and what, what you just need to know is if you try to interact with it it'll tell you that you need to power it on. Okay, So if that's the case click the power button you'll see that it's starting and once it's starting you can click the button and interact with it. So in this case I can open up open up the, uh, the pop-up expand the screen there and we'll see that in just a minute here we'll go through the boot up process. Actually, I'm just going to pause this while, while we wait. Oh, here it comes. All right, so here we go. Again, iLab, everything's just out of a browser. So. Once we get, uh, if you choose to use this, it's optional. Um, if you choose to use it, though, then this is these are this is what it looks like. So uh, we're just in a browser. Now we log in as we normally do. Button Tor and StartX. Okay, great. Um, that gets us into the desktop. So um, you know, iLab it is dependent on the internet. It, you know, you're obviously running a virtual machine over the internet, so performance isn't always great, um, but usually it's pretty good. So you'll just have to to, to test it out. Um, from anybody that's not in, you know, that the server actually runs it on campus. It's, it's located on campus, so the further you are from here, obviously the further you have to reach, and so. Um, everybody's experience is going to be a little bit different, so hopefully everything works well. Um, once you log in, if you log into the iLab, you'll see you have these three items on your desktop. Uh, I've already installed DBWA. Um, the only thing that I haven't is the shell, and we'll look at using that here in a second. So we'll get the internet going, and we'll log in. Again, we're not connected to the internet, so if I type in Google or anything, we should see that that's restricted. Um, so we'll go to localhost, and if we try to go to localhost, you may see that same error, unable to connect. Um, oftentimes, when you see that in this type of an environment, it means that the web server is not running. So if we open up a command line, what we can do is type in service Apache 2 status, and we'll see. Can you, and you see all those S's there? Sometimes the mapping between the keyboard gets screwed up too. So um, Okay, I'll just type it in. Okay, so Apache 2 status. All right. Okay, and you got to spell Apache 2 correctly. I forgot the E. All right, Apache is not running. So that means that now instead of status, we can say start, and we'll start the service. Okay, we'll go back to our browser, and we'll try to reload that. And now we got a page, but we have another error, and we can't connect to the database. So a uh, very similar problem database server isn't running so we can use service mysql status and we'll see that mysql stopped so we'll change that to start mysql starts we got a process id now if we go back to dbwa we got a good old login screen so um, here goes admin password you can think of this now as it's being concatenated in that sql statement um, for this program sql injection page is the one that we want to look at if we type in one of those payloads with a single quote, when we looked at that in the example, in the, you know, the beginning of the lecture, we knew that that should cause an error. And here we don't see anything. And the reason why, because DBWA has a security setting. Okay, you can set up the security if you want more of a challenge. Uh, in this case, we want to we don't I mean, we want low security. So we change that. We click submit, and now we've changed our status to low. So now if we go back to SQL injection. We can type something in with that single quote and submit, and now you get an error page. Now we know that we have a mismatch in those single quotes and that this program, that that page is vulnerable to SQL injection, um, and we can exploit it.
All right. Just back this up here. All right, so let's say that we typed in the example that we looked at in, in uh, the beginning of the lecture. So relic or one equals one with the hashtag. We click submit, um, and there you see, there's all the, there's all the, that's all the information. We dumped all the information in that database. We know kind of what's going on behind the scenes, and we know now we can use that payload to interact and, you know, to exploit this application. Okay. Uh, Sorry for the pause here. I gotta just pause this for one second as I check something in the VM before we look at it. Okay, um, since I've had some issues with my recordings tonight, uh, I just had to go in and I wanted to delete that web shell from the upload directory before we looked at it. So that's why I paused it and, and broke that uh, the, the lecture up a little bit there, um, just to go in and clean that one file up, that web shell that we're gonna look at before we look at it. Um, before we move on though, I do wanna point out and take a look at the lab itself. Um, as some of the things we're going to look at next are, are applicable to the lab. Um, you know, going through the lab, we're going to focus on SQL injection and then the web shell, the one that I'm talking about. We'll also use John the Ripper to try to crack uh, a simple password. So there's three tasks, and one of the first things I say, set the security level. So we just went through that. Um, first task is to provide a screenshot, very similar to what we just looked at. So if I go back to that page, you'll see um, very similar to this, except all of the information, right? So we have a username here and a password here. And don't worry, I'm not expecting you to come up with that command. The command comes right out of the book, right out of the out of the, the, the steps in the book. So um, that's where where you should find that. That's where you'll find that. Um, for the second one, then load up those hashes into a file and actually try to crack them. Say, okay, I don't want the password for admin because I already know it. So pick a different one, pick all of them. Um, put them into John, and then just take a screen capture of that output. Uh, and I'll show you how to do that next. And then the last one will be this web shell. Okay, and we'll go through uploading it. Um, for tasks two and three, I've got a couple of additional comments. Um, I had problems with the format or the the, um, uh, the order of the arguments. And one time I ran it, and then other times I don't. Okay, so this may or may not be applicable. Um, just know that these commands do work. So if you're having trouble getting it to John to actually work, Check the format of the file. Make sure that you have, we'll, we'll look at that in just a second. Make sure you have that correct format. Um, and then make sure that you don't have any typos in the command itself. Um, for the web shell, uh, kind of the same thing here. Um, you may run into a permissions problem. And that's typically a good thing. That's usually a good thing. Um, but for us, we want to be able to see this web shell. So if you, if you have any doubts, go in there. Um, make sure you set the permissions on that script according to these instructions here. So it should be pretty straightforward. Um, and we'll look at that in just a sec. All right, and that's it. So that's it for the lab, just some screenshots. And uh, let me know if you have any questions on those. Uh, as far as the application then, so uh, if we execute, here I already have the payload to get the entire database dump. And so what we can do then is let's get this hash, all right? And that's this value here. Uh, we'll see if we can get, get it selected anyway. Okay. So there's that value, and go back to a full screen. Okay, we'll copy it. And then what we want to do with that is put it in a text file. So if we go to our desktop and Okay. Uh, we'll just have to hold on a second again. Sometimes the the connection gets kind of kind of flaky, um, so we'll create a new document, and I'll just call this dbwa underscore passwords txt. Click that again. That'll open that up in gedit. And the format that we want is the username colon and that password hash. Okay. So we create that, and now we go back to our command line, and we navigate to John, to where John the Ripper is. So pen test passwords John. We need to be in the directory to execute John. Okay, so John's the name of the program. If you run it without any arguments, it'll tell you that here's all the different arguments. Um, so John's the program dash dash format equals uh, raw dash md5 dash dash show 
and then the location of that file. So in my case, I put it on the desktop, um, tilde forward slash desktop, tilde just is a shortcut for your home directory. Um, desktop is just one directory off the home. So if that worked, you'll see one password hash cracked and you'll have this value here. So that's what I'll be looking for. Just don't provide me with admin or password. All right, the last thing to look at is that web shell. So we'll go and get our web browser opened up again. Go to the upload tab and you can see here that it says choose an image to upload. Well, that's arbitrary. These dialogues are just file upload dialogues. So um, you can upload anything that you want. In this case, I downloaded that shell to my desktop. It's in a zip, you extract it. So you should upload something shell underscore v0 underscore 7 dot php. Okay, not the zip, the dot php, so the file inside the zip. Um, so these are file uploads, and what that means is they don't filter. Even though the, the page says an image, that file upload does not have any inherent capability to filter off of that. It can't say, nope, this is a .php instead of a .png and stop you from uploading. So it's up to the programmer and the program to do the, you know, to prevent you from uploading something bad or something that the application doesn't want. Um, if that isn't taken care of, then you can upload any sort of arbitrary content. Now, where that content goes will depend on if you can actually do something and, and cause an exploit. In this case, we are going to do that. That's the whole point of this um, of this application. So we choose that file, we click upload, and you should see that it was uploaded. Okay, if that's the case, you can just grab that URL and grab that path, and we'll just paste it in right behind localhost. Okay, and then click enter. Or visit, you know, navigate to that URL. Okay, just having a little bit of issues here again. All right, if it worked, you'll get this page. Password is password. Log in, and now you have your first, you know, you have a web shell. So um, play around with the different options, execute commands, just see what you can do with it, and provide a screenshot. Um, if for some reason it doesn't work, then it just may simply be permissions, okay? Um, we know where that was uploaded because it was in, it showed us, it said it was in the hackables folder um, on our web server, var, dub, 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 var, and then www. Those are the directories where websites are typically located. Uh, if we list the contents, we'll see there's our hackable folder. So we can change into hackable, and then we can change into uploads, okay? That's where we uploaded that shell. So uh, you may need to set the permissions to 755. That gives it execute permissions. Um, and then you can, you can uh, view that script. Um, you might not have to as well. Okay, it just depends on how you got your setup. If you're, if you're set up according to the instructions, you should be good. But if for some reason you go to that URL and the web shell does not pull up, it's probably a permissions error. So go in there and make sure you set the correct permissions. Um, so that's it. That's all I have. Let me know if you have any questions and uh, hope you enjoy the lab.